Hey, do you mind if I join you? Hey, that dude is oh, talking no, to you. Uh, sorry, you. Uh, not you, it was me. Can you kind of beat it, because you're a distraction? <laughs> hey! <laughs> What brings you down here? You're on vacation here with your boyfriend? Uh, no, I'm just here with, um... My mom. Why are you dressed like powder? The sun is very dangerous. Mom, it feels like you're putting on yeah, a lot. No, I'm just here when you need it here. Let's go out tonight. Hair, makeup, boobs, we're going out. Emily, I am not going out at night. Everything shouldn't be so scary. Oh, it damn well should. One in four tours are kidnapped. Not true. One, two, three, somebody's missing. I met a man. Well, drinking with a man in a foreign country. It's a smart, responsible thing to do. We need an amazing adventure. Where the hell are we? The scenic group. Stop the... Oh, my What's your pen number? Everything he says. I already am before you told me okay. to. Okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, God. I was gonna change it. I will get us out of here. I need you to believe in me. Mom, come on! Do you think maybe that guy's okay? I saw his brains. Why can't you just make me feel better? Listen, I need your help. Mom and I got kidnapped. State Department. My mom and sister. They've been taken. I imagine you have a commando squad. Four underground criminals who were tried for a crime they didn't commit. Sounds like the A team. It is the A team. Is do you have an A team? Why did I ever let you talk me into this? I should have just listened to you. I love you. This is great, but we really gotta get out of here, you know? Yeah, we should get out of here. Okay. okay. Mom, mom, mia, we have to fight, mom. We've got this. Mom, that was awesome. with the wrong bitches. Yeah. Go. I'm going to count down. I'm going to do it. Please. Please. 199. <laughs> Give it up one more time for the team behind Snatch. Let's hear it. Guys, congratulations on this wickedly funny movie. I loved it. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much. Also the first time I've ever referred to someone as wickedly funny, but there it is. Yeah. I hope you like that. Uh, so I heard that this movie, that you got cast in this film because you accosted her on a, on a plane. Is that true? That's correct. It was I the best accosting I think I've ever had in oh my, my life. Oh my God, if you're gonna get accosted, have it be by <laughs> me in LAX. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I read the script and just pictured the two of us the whole time. And, and then I'd never met Goldie and I, I ran up to her in an airport and I said, hello, I hope that we make this movie together. And she was very nice. Probably thought I was a little insane, and then but we really met in London, and and uh, yeah, we made it happen. And the two of you are an incredible mother-daughter duo. That's How did correct. you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was a question. Great idea on your part. Great idea. Uh, how did you know? What was it? What is it about Goldie Hawn and, and and her performance style that made you picture her in the movie? Are you seriously asking me that, Ricky? What is it about Goldie Hawn that made me? <laughs> oh well, I discovered Goldie. Um, I watched her tape. No, it was like the she's the greatest movie star of my time, and like I just think she's the funniest person alive. And and uh, yeah, there was nobody else in my mind. What did you think when she approached you in the airport uh, about this? How often do you get approached in airports for parts? Not very often. I <laughs> know very often. Uh, I will actually. I I didn't recognize her. I mean, it was like one of those things where somebody comes up and goes, "Hi," um, and I looked around and I thought, well, "I don't. I didn't really like." I thought, "Oh, I know. I must know her." No, but I didn't. I want to be know. polite, right? And, uh, but the real meeting was uh, in London. You know, I was at, it was a glamour event. Yeah. And uh, we went there and I went, I was with Katie and she was being honored for Entrepreneur of the Year. You were getting honored with a beautiful honor. And um, I was sitting at the table and on you came and she just came up to me and that's when we really clicked. And that's when I knew that it would be something that I would really love to do. Uh, Paul, uh, it's written by Katie Dippold, uh, your, you, your, your collaborator on a, on a lot of your films. Um, what made you pick Jonathan to direct the film? Had you guys worked together before? No, I'm just a, a huge fan of Jonathan's, and, and I knew Thank that Jonathan... You. Yeah, well, that, that we, we like working the exact same way, which is, you know, we obviously you know make sure that we have great material and have a great cast, but then 
both shepherd it along, but also give them the freedom to kind of do, you know, do their best and then let sort of organized chaos take place. And, uh, and I've just been such a fan of all his movies. And I also love the fact that all his comedies have such an emotional core to them, too. Absolutely. Jonathan, what drew you to the, to the script? Um, I had just had a little boy. Um, and I was, all the things that I had sort of been mad at my mom about <laughs> were um, <laughs> mistakes that I saw myself about to make. And um, so I started to like think. Like what? Do you mind if I ask an example? Oh my God! Look it's, what you did already. There's, there's Look at two. This. There's two. Too many. Get real at AOL. Too many. Bill, Jonathan. <laughs> I can. Or just build now. That's it's it's really between build. me and my therapist. I think all that stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. But um no, but you know the uh, the point is that I just start to picture my mom as a human being, and you know. And I also start to picture myself as a new parent, as not someone who was ready to like end their life and turn it over to someone else. Like I, I started to want to be seen as a human being by my son, even though he's only 18 months old. It's a lot to ask, yeah. but um, <laughs> it's a good start, though. <laughs> but it was that emotional core that really attracted me to the movie, and of course, the opportunity to work with these guys. Amy, how would you define your character at the beginning of the film? Uh, I would say she's like I was as a teenager, just really self-obsessed. And, yeah, just, you know, that entitlement. And uh, and it's all about um, her social media and not really about her actual experience. So it's like if, if I, as a 13-year-old, were suspended, you know, through my 30s. Uh, yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> Uh, Goldie, you, your, your mother, you have, you have three children. Was there anything about your... Uh... I actually I have three from my body, but I have four. Oh, excuse me. Because I have a stepson who's like my own. You have four children. You've been a mother to four children, still yeah. are. Uh, what about your time as a mother or, you know, your, your, yeah, your time as a mother did you bring to this role? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> The I, I mean, I tell you, maybe the hardest role I've ever played because I'm nothing like her. And, you know, it really was, it was tough for me to be subdued, you know? I'm not usually subdued in my movies, but in this one, I'm supposed to be afraid and I'm supposed to be scared of life. And every shot is locking a door or <laughs> making sure, you know, there isn't some rapist out there that's going to rape me. Um, <laughs> and she's just, you know, just you scared twice. of <laughs> life, right? Uh, so anyway, I did, I did dig down and, and do some research. Uh, and I, I'm research? just not scared, you know? So, but anyway, that's kind of who she, she was. And the beautiful thing about the movie is, is that the characters, even through all the craziness and all the funny and everything, and it is really fall down funny, is that you do have a real story about a mother and a daughter and their transition. So they transformed in this movie, and I think it has a lot to say. Amy, you have a really big, I think, a water cooler moment in the film, a kind of gross out moment without giving anything. Which one? Anything. What are you talking about? <laughs> if I say the big one, is that is that enough? Honestly, no. I don't know. Do you know what? What do you think? You don't want to give anything away, or can yeah. you give me a hint? That still doesn't totally. I'm so confused. I'm not even kidding. Okay, no, no, I know what you mean. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do know what you're talking about. Okay. What's it like shooting a scene like that? How long did that scene take to shoot? Is it fun or is it mostly I gross? Say, I would say that was the hardest scene to shoot, and um, just just know that he went like this with his hand in case you missed it. Um, so you w hopefully when you see it, you'll know. I don't even mean vomiting. Like, <laughs> no, it's, it's, no, no, no. You'll wish um, it was vomiting. Yeah, yeah, you will. Um, it was. I would say one of the hardest and the and the funnest scenes to film. We were laughing so hard <laughs> filming that, but, uh, you know, without spoiling what it is, growing up, that was, like, one of my big fears, r r randomly, but uh, but it was, it was like, one of the most physical, and just the two of us, when, when Jonathan yelled cut, were crying laughing. How hard is it to make a scene like that feel real while at the same time knowing that you're doing, like, really the broadest kind of comedy, but it still has to feel real so it works? Yeah, thank you for saying that. Actually, we that's the thing that Goldie and I really had in common was the belief of for something to be really funny, not to play it funny, but to play it, to really live it out and have it be real. So that's why people are like, did you have the best time filming the movie? It's like, well, in a lot of scenes where we were living out being kidnapped, so, you know, it, it lands funny, but, you know, that scene, I was just living it out. So <laughs> it was, but then, you know, when he'd say cut, then we just would think about what we just did and laugh so much. Now I have to ask, your, your back tattoo makes an appearance in, in the film. Thank you for noticing that, Ricky. Uh, you have a 
book based uh, with a title uh, about your the back girl with the lower back tattoo. Yes. Thank is you. the back tattoo at this point for you something that you're still kind of obsessed with? The fact that, like, I have a bad tattoo that I yeah. will never get over. I'll always bring it up or make fun of it. Do you feel that way a little bit about your, your back tattoo? It's something that you'll never get over talking about? No, I um, I just thought that was a funny name for the, the book. Uh, just because, you know, uh, the play on the dragon tattoo. And uh, even though I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, I'm not getting sued. But, uh, and I think it's, I think I, I love really... I them oh, suing you. Get sued yeah, yeah. Yeah. above or anything. Like, like, really wait a the, minute. The, I get it. Now. But what the tattoo symbolizes in the reason of this book is how I feel about a lot of things. It's like to wear your regrets like badges and just be like, I'm a human and this is a part of me now and I'm just going to embrace it. I don't bring it up uh, that much, I don't think. Uh, I, I mean, I'm lucky that I can't see it. Uh, <laughs> it's behind me, so only if somebody travels back there. Um, but it's... Uh, but in the movie, they were like, do you want us to cover it up? I was like, no, it's, it takes too long. And... People know I have it. And also the character that you're sort of presenting would, have would potentially that, yes. have one of the... And actually one of my favorite jokes in the movie. You, you, oh, thank you. you. At, at your tattoo's expense, so... I think that was a, an improvised I one. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I... I think I know the joke. Which joke yeah. was it? Can you say? I can say. So he... the I, When I meet James, played by Tom Bateman, he... Uh, he, I show we were comparing bad tattoos, and I show him mine, and he says, "Is that finished?" And I, I sa he improvised that line, and I, he says, "Is that finished?" And I said, "Well, people have certainly finished on it." Um, I know I'm really doing God's work. I, I don't know. Really, I, I do a blessing to the big screen. I do love that joke, uh, Jonathan. You did an amazing job of assembling an incredible supporting cast in this film. Obviously, these two are, are wonderful. But you have Joan Cusack, you have Wanda Sykes, you have Ike Barinholtz. It's it's incredible. How did you go about assembling everybody? Well, we have a wonderful casting director named Francine Maisler. And then, you know, it's really just about populating the world with funny people, but also people who can make it feel grounded. Um, and then, you know. Wanda was someone that Amy had admired and worked God, with. Didn't, didn't you guys do, like, you would hung out with her one day, I right? just hung with her a little bit, but her stand-up has just always killed me, and I just, yeah, I just totally pictured her in that role. And Joan, of course, is just so amazing, you know, and I had always wanted to work with her, one of the funniest actors, you know, just going back to when I was growing up watching movies. And Ike was someone I'd wanted to work with for a long time as well, just another person who's, like, a great improviser and just, can make his scenes into so much more than they are on the page sometimes. And Paul, this is something that you're so great at in films that you direct as well, which is casting amazing supporting players, but also making sure that each of them get a really great moment in the movie, at least one great moment. How do you do that while at the same time making sure it's in service of the story yeah. and the plot? You know, it, it's a whole reason why you cast great people and no matter how tiny the part is, because I, I, I don't want to waste a, a frame of film, and so I always hate when I watch a movie and there's sort of that sort of clearly kind of a, like a local hire person who just like, they went that away. And it's like, why, if you bring in somebody great, I've done it in some of my movies I directed where th there won't even be a, a line for these people, but have them come in and suddenly, you know, as we're improvising or playing, they'll come up with something that becomes one of the funniest moments or jo runs in the movie. So it, it's, it's really, you know, it's almost selfish to like to, to make sure that we populate with just these amazing people. Amy, Goldie, how much did the two of you improvise in the film? I mean, you had just said the back tattoo joke was an improvisation of yours. Katie is an, in an incredible writer. Was she on set with you guys improvising? Were you coming think, up with new I lines? I, I know what you're going to say. We've been asked this question before. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Do I have to talk into this? Boo. <laughs> um, it's so heavy. I know, it is heavy. Uh, My hands are sweating. Heavy. I feel that. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, but, the, but the, the, what was great was is that the, a lot of the script was really worked out, and we really had the Bible, if you will. And then when you know that, then you're gonna be able to improvise. And I think then you don't go off point, you don't get off script, or you don't go off story. So in that case, we sort of worked on that, and, and you guys really did a great job with that, and created you know real characters, real story, real progression. So when you do that, then Amy and I could be free. And she gave me a lot of, you know, loosened me up a bit for improvisation, because I, I'm not a big improviser. I always, you know, in those days that make my movies, they, I wanted a script, which you know me. <laughs> and I, I like to know where I'm going. But this was so fun because Amy really did help me learn how to do that. We ask, well, what did you learn from each other, right? And we've been asked that question a lot. And, and one of them for me is, is that I learned how to loosen up and become a better improviser. Hmm. Well, I guess what did you learn from, from Goldie? Um, 
uh, so much. And even before I knew her and I read her book, Lotus in the Mud. I mean, but, but really I would say my biggest takeaway is um, just not really about work as much as, uh, as just as a person, just to like make sure that you have the most joy in your life as possible and make sure that you take care of yourself and that's the only way you can really take care of the people around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's not yeah. a big thing, right? <laughs> that works, right? right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and to learn my lines. Wow. <laughs> uh, when it comes to a script and, and, a, and a great script that can that can be your Bible, you, do you also find, though, that when you're shooting a comedy film, you have to improvise, you have to come up with more lines on set? Because even though the script is amazing, what was funny two weeks ago might not be funny in that moment or feel funny in that moment while you're doing it? Sure. I mean, there's always the opportunity to try for a better joke. Um, but, you know, before we started shooting... The three of us sat down along with Amy's sister, Kim, who did a lot of writing on it, and Katie, and we kind of worked through the scenes. We didn't rehearse the scenes necessarily, but we talked through the scenes so that they all kind of made sense and where, where each character was starting and where each character was ending up. And when you know that, you kind of have a through line, so it almost renders improvisation. It makes it just a much smaller bit of what you're doing. Um, but yes, there's always you know the chance to try for a, a bigger, better joke. You know what I found, though? We were always excited because these, the supporting cast was so funny <laughs> and so great. And Amy and I would go, oh, my God, can you believe how funny they are? Because yeah. they brought so much more mm -hmm. to the movie. Chris Maloney. Chris Maloney. Yeah, Chris yeah, Maloney. Yeah. Stop it. We were like killing each other. Like, oh my God, I can't believe how funny he is. Yeah. I was and so excited when he turned, when it was him and then I realized the kind of character he was playing. I was like, oh, thank God they got Chris Maloney to do this. Yes. Exactly. Oh, God. And we had a lot of laughs over that. So it made it better, didn't it? And each time you go, oh, this scene is even better than we thought. Mm -hmm. And that's because of what you were saying. Yeah. Jonathan, what was it like? You know, you've done you've done comedies before. You've done dramedies, for lack of a better word, with Fifty Feet. What was it like for you to get to do some action sequences? It was really fun. <laughs> yeah, because I get to like ride in the back of a thing and like, <laughs> and then run it through the dust and stuff. I thought it was I thought it was really really fun, and that was like part of what attracted me to the movie too. Is that it has this core of sweetness and this emotional story, but it also has these kind of big action sequences and and kind of scope and stuff that. You know, you don't usually get to do in an original movie. Sure, you would get to do it in a superhero movie, but in like an original comedy, you don't usually get to work on this scale. And it was really fun, and I learned a lot too. Paul, do you enjoy doing action sequences? You know, you have the heat with action sequences. You have CG action sequences in Ghostbusters. I, I imagine it'd be kind of hard coming from comedy where you can be really loose and always be enjoying that and going to action, which is very rigid in terms of how you have to plot it out. I love it. I, you know, because I like physical comedy too. And, and the biggest thing you just have to face whenever you do comedy, action in a comedy, is to make sure that there's comedy in the action you know what, what you don't never want is just kind of like oh now we're off on some mayhem <laughs> kind of five minutes y you need to figure out okay we'll have the action but then something funny has to happen have the action then something funny happens it also propels the story forward so it, it, to me it's 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 the most fun and it's actually i think it's i think it's harder than doing it in a drama or or in an action movie. So there you go. Take that. He'll say Marvel it. Marvel. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Co comedy is harder. It's a little bit like patting your head and rubbing your stomach, you know? It's kind of an equation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. And I agree with you. The action, because I've done a few action comedies up down the line, they're so fun mm -hmm. because you can also be funny in the action. So you're getting a twofer, you know? The line is funny, the situation is funny, and then the action is funny, right? So it really makes a difference. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I love the stunt community, too. Shout out to all the stunt community. They're the most unsung heroes oh, they are. in movie. And, and they should have their own Oscar category, They're all too, watching so. this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> that, Represent. Doing some sort of... uh, Amy, you're, you, you have a drama coming out that's, uh, at some point this year, right? Yeah, Thank you for your yeah. service. Mm -hmm. What has it been like for you going from doing... Com I know you're a classically trained actress, but going from doing comedy for so long or the last decade or so and going into a straight drama? That was really scary. I was surprised they even asked me to audition. And then, uh, yeah, I love the script. Thank you for your service. David Finkel wrote this book. And um, and I just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm playing a real woman. So I spent time with her. And it's it's about PTSD and soldiers. And uh, I was really intimidated. And But I it is that, like, sort of training that you just go back to it and, and, uh, and just take it one scene at a time. But it was... 
it was so different, you know, the, the, the vibe on set and there are real soldiers there, it was, it was different. I understand why dramatic actors and actresses will say like, I wanna do a comedy. You know, you just wanna break yeah. from that like, that sort of sadness. Uh, Did you but it find was, that you had to let go of the comedy muscle every now and then? Like you'd be on set in the middle of a dramatic scene and you'd find yourself outside not. thinking of a joke or anything? <laughs> definitely not, no. It's, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was really like, you know, playing this real woman and, and the stuff that she was going through um, was not, no, n none of those instincts come up in, in the moment. Yeah, thankfully, uh, God. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> uh, before I turn it over to the audience for questions, I have, I have a question about uh, Inside Amy Schumer. You know, I know you've said that uh, there's no plans for it to come back for next season, although yeah. it's not canceled in any way. But our, uh, as far as I know, it's not in canceled. some ways. Oh, no, it's not. It, yeah, it's not. It's not canceled. It's not canceled. It's not canceled. Do you okay. miss doing it at this point? I mean, specifically in this political climate, are you? Do I don't you, know what you mean. Back to it? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? I kept that vague. So yeah, that I, I'll tell open. you what. I'm very grateful for SNL. Every I look forward to it every week, and uh, and I'm. I'm also grateful to not be doing that right now, actually. I'm, I'm very happy to be an audience member. Does it feel like it would be an added amount of, of pressure in this? Like before, because the sketches I would say were really good at being somewhat timeless in terms of how it tackled whatever political issue we were tackling. It's something that had been going on for decades, not like a response this to week, a tweet. Yeah, that's yeah. why SNL is so, is so powerful right now because it is weekly and uh, yeah, I just have such respect and admiration for them. Uh, it, yeah, it seems like it would be difficult to kind of keep up with the sort of hottest button stuff. Yeah. Let's get some questions from the audience here. Who's got a microphone yeah. and has a question Ooh. to put into it? Uh, hi. hi, guys. Nice to see you. What um, year in acting school are you? I'm actually not in acting no, school. No, I was just doing like an inside the actor <laughs> studio. I wish thing. I was. Yeah, I wish I was. I can Jane get an answer. Jane, freshman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be, that'd be fun. Um, but I'm curious, since this is a film about a kind of a vacation gone wrong, do you guys have any funny vacation stories that you want to share? Oh, Jonathan does. Wait, what's my vacation story? I don't know, Jonathan. But I don't you know, Jonathan. Yeah, you got something. Oh, I uh, I went to the fire festival. No, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> nice. That's all I got. That's my one joke. Wait, that's hilarious. Thank you. That joke can be applicable anywhere for the next couple of weeks. Oh like. my god. Oh my god, Jonathan. Anyone else? <laughs> Paul, I'm, pr Paul I'm pretty proud of that, so I'm not. Paul has a doozy. Me? Oh god. Uh, no, are you just doing this yeah, today? Yeah, yeah, you are an air traffic controller over there. Uh, I got in trouble for Ghostbusters because I was, uh, I'd been really nice to the to all the fans and everybody for a year, and I did wasn't addressing the trolls. And then after we wrapped production, one of the trolls, after I'd had a bunch of wine at lunch, said something really mean. So I wrote something really mean back, and then. My life was terrible after oh that. So. Was that a vacation? That was on vacation, Paul? Yes, it was. It was. That was on vacation. Oh, you were on vacation. Uh, at a restaurant in Italy. So there you go. So. Well, what is it like shooting? A oh, I'm sorry, Goldie, go ahead. Did you have something to say? No, I just put my tongue in my tooth. Fake you out, Ricky. <laughs> you got me, Goldie. You got faked out by Han. <laughs> What's it like shooting a, a vacation film? I mean, I imagine you guys, where did you shoot the film? Hawaii. So you're shooting in Hawaii, and I'd imagine you want to be able to take in Hawaii and enjoy vacation, but shooting a movie is still 14, 16 hours a day. Do you get to experience much of the resorts, the vacation? They had to drag me out of the hotel three months later. I mean, I, I, it couldn't have been the best place to have, you know, a location. And your weekends are off, and you had beautiful water all around you, hikes everywhere, uh, weather amazing. Did you guys hang out on the weekend? And great Mai Tais. Yeah, we hung out like we we knew to get it in early because we the action sequences and shooting in the jungle was progressively more and more. So, you know, we while we were at the Four Seasons when we started is when we sort of partied and then we would just drink over FaceTime together from our own because we were living at opposite sides of the island. But we were just as happy, weren't we? Very happy. Yeah, it was awesome. You should try it. Yeah. You guys should all try to shoot a studio movie out in Hawaii one day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's one thing today. <laughs> Did you have something you want to say? Or? No, no, I'm just remembering that party. It was a good party. Oh, okay. That was a that good was party. You were a DJ. Good party. DJ. You were the DJ. He's a killer DJ. Everyone was and dancing. The was Do you have a DJ amazing. name? No. Oh, I was hoping you were gonna say something that you would regret for the rest of your <laughs> life. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a DJ name, but I should get one. Yeah. 
Um, no, well, you I, really I, should get one. I'm gonna work You'd on it. Start, it. Let's start a, a build contest to uh, yes, name. Yes, please tweet us Jonathan, your yeah. Jonathan Levine <laughs> DJ suggestions. <laughs> now, now you'll know what it's like to be trolled. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next question from an audience member. There's a right here. Hello. Uh, Hi. <laughs> uh, it's it's such an honor to ask a question to all of you. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, for <laughs> thank you, um, for successful screenwriters that you are, for writing two of the best comedies of 2015, Spy and Trainwreck. What's the difference between writing something personal, like on on your own, opposed to uh, collaborating with your own sister or Katie Dippold on different projects? Good question. Yeah. Um, and I love you. <laughs> uh, I know. Just I like do. you don't I see someone, you you're just like, I love you. Not that we didn't love the first question person, like, also love you. Um, but, like, really, really love you. So, uh, I, it was really fun and kind of relaxing. Trainwreck was so autobiographical that it was, it was kind of heavier. But, but this, you know, Katie wrote such a funny script, and then my sister and I loved every minute of coming in and taking our passes at it and to, you know, insert more kind of Goldie and, and myself into it. Uh, and and it was really fun, but it's gotta be the right people. And and we had such a good time writing. And, and then we developed it more with Jonathan and with Goldie and we were really all collaborating and, and mostly all the time on the same page. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say it, it, was, it was just like a total joy, honestly. Yeah, but you still gotta write stuff on your own yeah. sometimes. <laughs> and also, you really never stop writing a script. It's amazing. I mean, we're writing all the way through post-production, still writing lines for off-camera dialogue, things we want to change. Mm -hmm. So the, you just have to keep working. It's like never finished. Uh, they always say with a movie, you don't never finish it. They just kind of take it away from you eventually. How, how about the one when you write the script and then you don't want to give it up? <laughs> it's not ready yet. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, no, exactly. I, mean, I haven't finished. I, I still have that scene to do. You don't want to give it up. Yeah. So it's just you, you give it, and then there, it's, it's almost like... What my father used to do when I asked him for a dollar, he'd mm. hold it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd have to pull it away from him. And, and it's like that. It's like, I don't want them to see it yet because it's yeah. not perfect. But, you know, you got to give up the perfection part and just mm -hmm. write your heart out and give it, and you'll get good feedback. Because it's only real once actors come on board and people come on board and start helping out and, and mid turning it into something. It's not a book. You know, it's a living, breathing thing. And Paul, you can you can write all the time. You're not like a precious process oriented writer. I, I interviewed you like two years ago for Spy, and you were in the midst of writing Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. And I went when I went back to introduce myself, you were literally in the green room writing Ghostbusters. Yeah, like exactly. you had ten <laughs> minutes to write before going on, and then after going on, you would go write for ten minutes and then go to the next. Yeah, I wrote two right? scenes just now during this whole event. Oh, so, please, yeah. I mean, it's, present. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's I'm an on impressive. The deadline. <laughs> it's where you are. It's an impressive skill. Most people are like, you know, I need to wake up, and no one can be around me, and I need to write for four hours you're just like writing wherever you can well i, like, I really I, I admire that well, that, i mean you know who does that too is steve martin because he would go we'd make movies and he'd go and he'd start writing his book he'd go in the trailer i have to like lock myself up in a room and go into a dream state right i, I wish I, I had that well i, I, I love writing yeah. in new york because there's there's so much inspiration yeah in the human energy you pull off of all of you and yeah. just, you know look out there there's a million stories to be told and so you just want to capture it all yeah I think we have time for one more question. Who was a, oh, hi. Uh, hi. I love um, you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I love you too. Okay, we love oh my God, you. thank you. So honored. Um, so you mentioned earlier that your characters are really different than who you are as people. So I was wondering as performers, is that more challenging or is that more of a free range for you to explore your character? Uh, it's a really good question. It's always exciting to play someone that you aren't, right? That's what acting is, basically. But she was a very reactive character. She wasn't a proactive character. So it was a, it, for me, it was like a challenge, and I really enjoyed the challenge, right? Uh, is it easier to play a character that has more of your characteristics or things that you do? Uh, yeah, much easier. And sometimes you get to exercise a lot of muscles because you've got a lot of freedom. But when you're playing a restricted character, emotionally restricted, you know, you have to find your small little areas. But when I did uh, uh, Overboard, um, which we talked about the other day, I did, um, had to do Annie first. No, Joanna I, first. No, I no Annie first. I'm Annie sorry. Annie first, yeah. Let me just correct Goldie no, Hawn I, about I, Overboard. No, that's, that's, I love it. I love it. You got me yesterday. But anyway, but, jo but Joanna, who was, you know, the, the rich bitch, uh, I hadn't even played yet. So, you know, I had to play something that I had no reference to as to who, sh who she really was. I never put her on her feet, right? That was difficult. 
So, but it was, and one was a very restricted kid and the other one was just out there. So, you know, it was really, it is fun. But you know, the challenge is the key, okay? And, and that's what you want. And, uh, and that's what I got. And I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Uh, <laughs> guys, uh, Snatch comes out Mother's Day weekend, right? It's so funny. Congratulations. It's a wonderful thank film. You. Thanks, Ricky. Thank you for having us Snatch. on. Thanks so much, guys. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thanks, Ricky. Of course.